just got done watching Saw X. This is the 10th film in the Saw franchise, and typically when a horror franchise gets to its later installments, it starts to kind of dwindle, as we've seen through a majority of this franchise. But thankfully, Saw X is not just one of the better installments of this franchise, it's actually the best one yet. And I have a lot of reasons for that today, but I'm definitely excited to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section, so make sure to leave your thoughts down there, hit that like and subscribe button, and without further ado, I really want to jump into this because I have a lot of love for the Saw franchise. Even though I've never really like loved one, I've always appreciated and loved my time with the films. I don't dive into them. I don't rewatch them yearly. I've seen them all. And the first four Saw films for me were like a blast because my introduction to this franchise was my dad giving me the Jigsaw mask in a tricycle and wearing it for Halloween. And I didn't know what it was from. And then he showed me the first four and I thought, this is disgusting, but it's great. And... Ever since the first film, you know, the film franchise itself has kind of shifted more towards gore and torture porn and blood and guts and the traps itself because that was like one of the more fascinating parts of the first film and it makes sense that they would go in that direction. A lot of horror franchises always focus more on, oh, the entertainment value than the story itself and it's kind of frustrating that Saw X takes place between Saw 1 and 2. And this wasn't the direct sequel that they were going to do back in, what, 2003? Like, this should have been the follow-up to Saw 1 in every sort of light. And I find it to be a little bit disappointing that they didn't do that. I'm happy we have it now because it's spectacular. And Tobin Bell is incredible, and it very much more is a character piece. Like, the way that Saw 1 ends with the game over and Tobin Bell walking out of the room, to open up this film with Tobin Bell, you know down in Mexico trying to find an experimental medical procedure in hopes of a miracle cure for his cancer because he's sick and desperate at this point but he discovers that the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable it makes sense and it really speaks to a lot of different things in our world but specifically it goes back and you get introduced to Tobin Bell at that point and you know that he's taking out these bad people per se and we see that throughout the entire franchise that that's something that he's really much been into but this kind of was that next step. And I'm really happy that director Kevin Garat and writers Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger, who have been very much a big part of the Saw franchise for quite a while, and they've been, had their hands in so many different things within it, decided to come back and bring Tobin Bell, whether, whether this is his last or just next time playing Jigsaw once again, it's fantastic to see him come back and then give him this fantastic character study that dissects John Kramer as a human being and really much makes him more of the anti-hero that I think a lot of the other films wanted to portray him as, but never really did. And this one does for a lot of ways, specifically <laughs> the way that they actually handle the villain in here. That I, I mean, it's really easy to cheer for John Kramer. But I also love that they brought Shawnee Smith back as Amanda, who I thought was phenomenal, and we're gonna talk about that, but I want the biggest thing to kind of be looked at within this film is I don't think a lot of reviewers are going to mention this and maybe you're someone who's trying to judge like oh I just saw the first Saw film I know this is taking place in between one and two should I watch Saw X and I'm not a Saw aficionado I don't know every little thing about Saw so I'm kind of your your best luck right here and I decided not to rewatch all the Saw films before this I just watched one went into this one next well I think you'll be a little bit lost. I wasn't lost because I know like the entire franchise, but I think what this film does is a central piece. Like if I were to rewatch all the Saw films, I would probably rewatch this one last. Spiral and Jigsaw can kind of go wherever, but in the mainline stuff, I probably wouldn't watch this one where it's actually placed at. And the biggest reason being is they don't explain Shawnee Smith. They don't really, they just kind of throw Amanda in there, which... We're going to talk about Amanda because I thought she was phenomenal in this and I love what they've done with her. This is like finally giving her a lot of stuff. But I've always found that the twists and turns that they do with certain characters and revelations that you see throughout this movie, they are spoiled if you try to go into two and three and four and five and, so, and such and such like that. So be warned on that. If you don't care and you want to watch it chronologically, you can. You just might be a little bit confused on certain things and certain little fun easter eggs in there without getting into too many spoilers but you came here to hear about why this film is the best saw film and while i've rambled and rambled because that's how i like to do reviews I, I mean the film is the mix 
of the two best aspects of the entire franchise. When you look back at the first Saw film and how it was this creepy, horrific thing where, yes, it had the traps, but it wasn't like a major stellar part of it all it was always about the mystery and the story and the underlining part of that but as well as the characters itself and while the characters aren't super deep in the first saw film you're always interested about Tobin and bell and i found that the fact that the franchise started to build and build and build more on jigsaw should give enough details about tobin's character but never gave too much and i found that this movie just did the perfect amount first off letting Tobin bell just give his best performance as the character and arguably like probably one of the best performances of his entire career but it also allows you to understand his psyche a little bit more where he's coming from because it is literally all from his perspective and films like don't breathe 2 which tried to humanize a villain didn't do it that well this film does it in a, a fantastic manner and the same thing goes for shawnee smith who again i'm a huge fan of her as amanda i really love her in this role i love how they focused on their two relationship, their chemistry with one another, their understanding of one another. And when you know the rest of the franchise, it kind of just elevates it to that next degree. Like going back now and looking at everything, you're like, I can appreciate a lot more of this. And that's something that I feel that prequel films like this should do is elevate further films that maybe weren't the best or had some issues. And that's what exactly Saw X does is elevate all of those. And Tobin's fantastic. Shawnee Smith, I loved. I actually thought there's some weirdly deeply emotional parts to this, specifically between the two, that I was not expecting to get. And even some nice humorous moments, specifically within the editing, I'm not going to get into it, but like the final like five minutes, like what they do was kind of hilarious. And they do a couple hilarious things throughout this. But Savon Makati Ludd, who plays Cecilia Peterson in here, uh, she's fantastic. Uh, she's great. She's a great, great, great character in here. And I was very surprised where they took this character. I, I mean, the rest is all great. I, I, There's not a single weak link in here, whether you're comparing certain characters or the people in the traps. Everyone looks scared, everything like that. But specifically, those three really takes this film into that next degree. And I think this is kind of the direction that the Saw film should take because while it does focus on John Kramer a lot in his psyche, it does show like the people who follow him and understand him and try to want to follow in his footsteps like Amanda. And I'm actually really curious to see where they clearly go with the Saw franchise next. I think there's a lot of avenues and a lot of unique things that they could do with apprentices. And I actually think that that's where the film should look forward to next. That's just my theory. I'm not saying that that's what the film hinted at or anything. It's just kind of something that I've always found was a big pro to this franchise. And this film only elevates it more. We talked about the performances, though. We've talked about the story. And while they've really taken that great aspect of the first Saw film, the thing that they take from the rest of the Saw films is make sure to deliver on the gore, the blood, and the traps. And I've always found that they've never really been able to find that balance ever in this franchise, but this film actually finally did. Like where Spiral kind of promised me like a seven-esque Saw film, and I went into that film and I enjoyed it for what it was, but at the end of the day, it was the exact same generic Saw film that I had seen thousands of times before and was not the, the spiral detective story that I was being sold from the trailers. What Saw X gives you in the trailer is exactly what you get. You get a horror character piece drama within it that of course does have the traps and the blood and the gore and the jigsaw mayhem. And when it gets into that, I mean, the, these traps are freaking disgusting at times um i think some people were blowing it a little bit out of proportion that like these are the best traps in the world i think some of the traps are still some of the best but it's the usage of the tra i'm trying not to spoil them but because i didn't know any of these going in besides the i one but the usage of all these traps and the way that they play out are just disgusting and again not the goriest thing i've ever seen but pretty damn high up there. Uh, there's one with these things on this guy's arm that's very early on in the film that I, I just kept going, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, and, and that's kind of what you want to. You want to wince. You want to laugh in nervousness. You want, you want to be excited. You want to smile. You want to do all these different things. And I find that Saw X just delivered on the goodness of that 
for sure. If you're looking for that mix of story, character, and the traps and entertainment, you're going to get that. Now, I've never really loved a Saw film. I've enjoyed this franchise for what it is. I've really liked some of these movies, and I kind of love aspects of it. This film isn't perfect. Um, I do think it is the best one yet, but it has the kind of the same issue that I find that the first film kind of has, and that's some of the pacing. The some of the pacing is a little bit tad off, and specifically in its mannerisms with story. And there was a couple things that I actually wish they would have developed a little bit more. It kind of took a little bit too much time to jump into what was going on, and it seemed like they had to up the ante. Like, like for me, when you come out of Saw 1, you know exactly where Tobin Bell is. But even if you don't, you know where he's coming from. And I think they could have started this film in a different spot to kind of help the pacing of the film. Because you definitely feel the runtime in here. But, I mean, that's such a minor con to how much I really enjoyed this Saw film. And I think if you are a franchise lover of this, you're going to be absolutely flipping your shit over this. Because Saw X is exactly what I wanted from Saw since the very first one. A perfect in-between film for the franchise that lays out so many possibilities for the future. They really made Tobin Bell the anti-hero of this story and delivers a fantastic performance. Plus, Shawnee Smith is awesome. She gets so much to do. The gore, the blood, the traps are all there. Again, as a Saw fan that's not really loved everything but just kind of has enjoyed it and has watched the films for what they are um and has some like nice little childhood memories of this it's it, it sounds weird saying that but we all have some horror franchises in our childhood that screwed us up in some way shape and form saw x kind of brought me back to those nice flares of it all and i think if you are a fan you're going to love this i think if you've never been a fan of saw you're probably going to roll your eyes at this but it is not more of the same it's better of the same like, it's better content and better story, and I hope going forward with whatever they do in this franchise, they do take their time with the rest of it, because this is exactly what this franchise is. I don't know where they go, though, because there's so many different possibilities, and honestly, with those possibilities, worrisomeness, because obviously, they've kind of dug themselves into a hole. I wonder if it would have been smarter to kind of just retcon most of the franchise and just kind of start anew, kind of like they've done with Halloween, but maybe that would get a little bit too confusing. Anyways, I continue to ramble on because it's late at night when I'm reviewing this, so with all that said, I'm going to give Saw X a B plus. Yeah, it's the best Saw film yet. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think you will as well, too. Thank you so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Look out for a ton of movie reviews coming up soon. And, of course, until next time, stay classy.